The neighbor field is a um, more technical field that, that we've created and really designed towards sort of the, uh, the programmer savvy effects artist. Um, basically what it does is it gives you information in your scene about what is close to your particles. So uh, we'll start off with this first example file. Um, and basically the, there's one particle system that's happening in, from being emitted from two different emitters. One of them is co colliding with this ground plane, the other one's colliding with this cylinder. Now in the expression for the particles, Uh, we're using the neighbor field to find out who our closest neighbor is and if they're within a certain distance away from us push ourselves away from it. So let's take a look at, at what the field looks like for that. So there's a neighbor field connected to the particles. Um, the neighborhood right now is has nothing connected to it which means the neighborhood is this particle system itself. So it's basically looking at its brothers and sister particles. Uh, the neighborhood could be either a, a curve or a uh, a nerve surface or poly mesh, and I'll show you that in another example. Now, you can query a, sort of as many neighbors as you want by just saying query next neighbor. So, for each neighbor, we can query multiple attributes as well. So, for our first neighbor, what we want to find out is the distance of that neighbor, and we're going to store it as dist one pp. Um, we also want to query the position of that first neighbor and map it to position one on our particles. Um, and we're going to query the radius pp attribute of that first neighbor and map it to the radius uh, 1 pp on our particle system. So you can query as many attributes of that neighbor as you want and assign them to your particle system. So I've done that for a, a few of the na nearest neighbors. Now if I go into the particle shape itself, you can see that I've got those attributes, dist1, radius1, and so on. And if I go into the expression for them, it's a fairly simple expression. So basically what I'm getting is uh, the amount of force that I want to apply to push these particles away from each other. And the amount of force is based on how close uh, those particles are to where this current particle is based on the radius. And then in this pretty simple expression, basically, if the distance between the nearest particle and my radius is less than my radius, which means that that closest particle is inside of my radius, then I want to push them away by the direction between my position and that particle's position times a little bit of force. So relatively pretty simple expression. And you can see that as these particles scale up, um, they still keep trying to push themselves away from each other. So you can kind of use this um, type of an idea to do things like fill volumes with particles or, or just get some relaxation of a soft body mesh uh, or generally just knowing who's around you uh, can lead you to create more interesting expressions. And I'll show you an example of that with this next file. So here's an example where for the neighboring fields I'm using uh, a piece of geometry and sort of as a cheat, what I did was I took a bunch of objects and just merged them into one mesh. That way I didn't have to have multiple fields. Now for each um, each polygon on the mesh, I've sort of, I automatically get one sample per face, but I can increase that further to do more samples. So if I could be more accurate if I wanted to. So in a way, this is a way of doing um, more intelligent collision avoidance because as opposed to having the particles hit the surface that's closest to them in the direction that they're traveling, the particles become aware of what's around them. And then in your expressions, you can do things to either steer those particles away by giving them forces that are perpendicular to the surface, or in this case, you can have them crawl up and over the surface. Um, gives you a lot more control over how your, uh, your particles interact. This is kind of a, a quick and dirty example showing that you can have particles collide with particles and do things like inherit their colors. So this is almost like paint mixing. As these particles basically smash into this, um, we have this, this master particle object called bullet particles. And they 
all have different colors and as they go in and hit that that target set of particles those target particles inherit the color of what they were hit with so in another example of just creating some more complex relationships and this again this is two different particle streams one is red one is blue as they start to mix and, and become close to each other they they blend their colors together continuously until you get this kind of a purplish color in the middle